Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. Today we're going to hear about a new type of polling system intended to help people live better. My name is Don Vaughn and I am the head of product at a technology company called Invisibly. And Invisibly is working on, on things that might not have been so commonplace for people to be aware of even just a short time ago. Could you describe uh, what Invisibly does so that they can understand a little clearer where you're coming from? Yeah, you know, one of the things that we do is uh, polling, so political polling and taking surveys uh, for, you know, for any matter that people are interested in, but politics is a pretty hot one lately, and um, so we're doing something, we're revolutionizing how polling is working. How it's typically worked for the last, you know, many decades is that pollsters will call you on your landline, or they'll call you more recently on your mobile phone, and try and understand how many people support one candidate or another, how many people support one issue or another. I mean, that worked for a while, but now that we're in a period where fewer and fewer people have landlines and many people are not likely to accept a call from some unknown number, we know we all get a lot of robocalls, um, what's happened is that we've seen, especially with the Trump-Biden election and also Trump in 2016, that what the polls say is the likely outcome is pretty far from what actually happens. How polling works is it assumes that the people that you're talking to represent pretty much the whole United States or the whole state, uh, depending on what you're looking at. And, you know, the types of people that, that answer robocalls uh, on their land or even have a landline, is, it's just uh, it's not that many people anymore, and it's not the same demographic that represents the whole United States. So we think those polls are, you know, they're, they're pretty off. Um, and then to make matters worse, when you get someone who's, uh, who's as politically, let's say, divisive as Trump, and people either love him or hate him, um, for the most part, what you end up getting is when people call you on a phone and ask you a question, you're, it feels very personal. This is my hypothesis on why the polls were so wrong, is that it feels personal. And so for, for those who support Trump, um, they generally, you know, Pew Institute and Cato Institute both show that Republicans, on average, feel a little less comfortable sharing their political beliefs than do Democrats. So when you have somebody calling you and you're identified by your phone number, I think people on the Republican side are just less likely to say who they're voting for. Is that a phenomena that has been clear to pollsters for as long as, as anyone can remember? Or has Trump himself been such a divisive personality that people on the Republican side have become less likely to be to be free to talk to people? That's a really great question. Uh, you really hit the, the nail on the head. I think that it's been slow to happen that people are realizing that phone technology is out is outdated as a way of polling. And um, in 2016, though, I think you know that was the first time there was such a huge deviation. And I think Trump's really you know the mainstay behind it because if if you called people's phones and landlines and overall, sure, people didn't respond, but overall they kind of generally represented the national population. You wouldn't, you'd see some noise, but you wouldn't see a lot of uh, bias in terms of like, on average, they'd kind of get it right. But what you're seeing is you need somebody who's divisive like Trump that you get people more likely to report one candidate than the other. And that's what you get with somebody like Trump. You get people who, who, who maybe support him or support him kind of marginally or for one issue or another, I think they're less likely to report it. And now that we've now had two elections, both with Trump, where the, the pollsters got it wrong twice, it's tough to make excuses twice. You know, if you do it once, they blamed it on not um, doing some accounting for people's education levels, um, that that was what was wrong with their model. But now that they've done that and they got it wrong again, I think, you know, they are going back to the drawing board um, and it's, I'm not surprised because it's, you know, we were, we've been saying for months that this race was actually very close. We even had Trump up, uh, I think a percentage point at one point during the race before we called it, um, for Biden, but it was so close that nobody would accept it. None of the newspapers we talked to were willing to touch it because it's a new technology and they were still going with the quote unquote gold standard of, of landline and mobile phone polling, and um, I think now people have opened their eyes and say, "Well, I don't, I don't believe you." Um, so try something new. Could you identify in your experience a link between the types of people who are involved in supporting Donald Trump, who have often been described as people who went for years 
without participating either in voting or any other political aspect and got energized by Donald Trump, but may also be the type of people who wouldn't necessarily respond to a poll for the same reason because it had to do with something that they previously had not taken much of an interest in? Yeah, you're, that's, a, that's another really interesting question. So our, our product is called Real Time Research, and we end up doing polling online. You can ask about 10 questions. We usually ask people 10 questions as they're browsing the Internet because you get a much more representative sample. Everybody's online. Not everybody has a landline or answers robocalls. So we think we do a pretty good job of getting everybody. We did not ask that question, though. We didn't ask why people were voting for Trump. Um, there's definitely some related issues on if you look at support for, you know, uh, you know, the police and law and order. Uh, we did get an answer for that, that people who vote for Donald Trump are more likely to support issues like that um, and are mo- more focused on, on, you know, really one side of that, which is they're heavy on the law and order piece. So that's the only thing I can do to explain it. I, I, I didn't ask the question. I kind of wish I would have it since that's such a great question. You know, did have you voted before? Or is this your first time voting? And are you energized by Donald Trump um, getting you out there? I will say that, you know, some of the, the stereotypes of what a Trump voter is didn't hold in our sample. Um, you know, we actually found that it was a pretty diverse sample across age ranges and um, and, and income levels and, and demographics that, that support Trump for, for one reason or another. So I think that the, the stereotype that it's, you know, one kind of person who could vote for Trump um, just didn't hold in what we found. And you know, maybe we got it right, maybe we didn't get it right in terms of demographics, but I, I tend to think that we got it pretty right because when you, you look at our predictions, as far as we can tell, we are the single most accurate poll that was done. Um, we predicted the electoral college vote within four votes, so 228 versus 232. It was uh, it was very close, and some of the other, you know, if you take 538, which is a very popular aggregator of polls, and you just took their best predictions for each state – they were much lower. They weren't even. Um, they weren't even in the ballpark. So we we think that what we have to say and what we found um, in terms of demographics is probably pretty spot on. It sounds like that would be uh, a feather in your cap, so to speak. As as I understand it, with TV ratings, for instance, the the most diverse that you can get in a sample, it's more likely, presumably, to be representative of the nation as a whole, even though the actual numbers of respondents themselves is relatively small. Yeah, you know, a traditional poll only has 800, maybe 1,000 respondents, and that's kind of how the statistics breaks out, that if you you have the, subject, the various supports for Democrats and Republicans that you have, you need about 800 to 1,000 randomly sampled people in the United States, then you'll get a pretty good idea of what that margin is. And like I said before, the problem is that it's not a random sample. You're calling people that answer robocalls, and I don't know, that's a very particular kind of person that would take that. Um, so... But what we do is since we show ads, um, we show surveys online uh, on web pages as you're browsing, we can get a much larger sample. So instead of 1,000 or 800, we had 65,000 registered voters in our sample because, you know, it's much easier to reach people online. That's a common way now, you know, we go to a website and you're going to get uh, you're going to get some of the content from the site and you're going to get ads and you're going to get surveys. So um, we 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 really think that going digital is the way. Okay, I'd like to pick up on that point in just a moment, but first I'd like to ask you if diversity and population, are the two terms diversity and random sample, do they actually work together or is it an oxymoron mm-hmm. to expect a, a, a random sample to, to also be diverse enough to represent uh, a significant population size? Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting statistics question. I think they can go hand in hand. I think you're, you're on to something that when you have small samples and, a, and a using a, a landline call or a cell phone call that you're not going to get either. You're not going to get a random sample and you're not, um, and you're not going to get a diverse sample. What, what? We are in the midst of a two-part series about a polling organization called Invisibly with Don Vaughn, the guest. For further information, call us at 860-346-1049, 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 WIHS.